All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be going over seven businesses that never fail. And one of them has a 95% success rate. Now to put that in perspective, most businesses have below a 10% success rate and some of the better ones have somewhere between a 10 and 30% success rate. So 95% is absolutely ridiculous. So these are not only gonna have a better chance at succeeding than other businesses, but they're also gonna have a better chance at succeeding than even a job, right? So you're gonna have a higher chance of losing your job somehow, whether you get fired or laid off, or you just decide that you don't like it, than these businesses. So if you appreciate me doing these types of videos, let me know by gently tapping that like button. And the first one on the list is going to be a transportation business at 76.4% success rate. And by the way, these numbers come from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, so it's directly from the government. And a transportation business is where you're gonna offer your services, moving either people or cargo from point A to point B. And you can get started by using your own vehicle, but eventually you'll probably want to invest in either a van, a truck, or a semi. And there's various different types of transportation businesses, such as ride hailing services, public transportation, airlines, and courier services. And you can think of a transportation business as your very own travel-themed monopoly board, where you collect money while traveling the streets without the risk of stepping on tiny plastic hotels. And this makes sense because if you think about it, nothing in the world is going to happen without transportation. People are always going to need to either get themselves or cargo from point A to point B. And so you're always going to have a steady stream of customers and the potential for long-term success. And this is why 19-year-olds like Michael Sant are able to start trucking businesses that are highly successful. Mikhail Sant is only 19 years old and he's already a self-made millionaire. How did he do it? I started a trucking company from scratch and in three months we did $159,000 in revenue. And another thing that's great about transportation is it's a relatively recession-proof business. Even during recessions, people are going to have to get things from point A to point B. So some of the pros of this one is the high success rate, the lack of a need for technical knowledge, and the relatively low startup cost. Some of the cons of this one are operational challenges such as vehicle maintenance, the potential for fluctuating demand and seasonal service, and the fact that the profit margins do tend to be relatively low. So overall, because of the fact that the profit margins are so low, I'm gonna give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. So buckle up and prepare to steer yourself into a future where you're the boss, the road is your canvas, and every journey is a ticket to success. And speaking of playing Monopoly, the next one on the list is going to be a rental property business at an astounding 85.3% success rate. And this is almost like a real life game of Monopoly where you strategically position your properties on the board, collect rent, and navigate through the challenges posed by tenants and market fluctuations. And the most common form of a rental property business is where you take out a mortgage on a rental property, let's say for $1,000 a month, and then you rent it out to somebody else for $1,500 a month. And after all the other other costs like property tax, for instance, you mm -hmm. end up netting a good amount of money, which is why landlords make $97,000 on average Per year, whereas the median household annual income in the United States is about 62,000. And it's not just the income you get, you also get to take advantage of different tax benefits and the appreciation on the house itself. And this is why Michael Albaum and people like him are able to make an astounding $431,000 a year just from their real estate investments. And real estate is actually the number one thing that has created the most millionaires out of any business model out there. So the pros of this one are the potential for passive income, also the potential for long-term wealth, because of the tax benefits and the fact that your properties are going to increase in value over time and the fact that you get to diversify your investment portfolio. Some of the cons of this one are market fluctuations, property maintenance and repair responsibilities, and dealing with challenging tenants or legal issues. But overall, I'm gonna have to give this one an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. So if this sounds right for you, get ready to juggle tenants, tackle leaky faucets, and collect rent like a pro. The next one on the list is gonna be one of the oldest businesses known to man, and that is is going to be the agriculture business at an 88% success rate. That's right, step into the agriculture business where plants are the boss, the seasons play hide and seek, and the only thing that's predictable is unpredictability. And this typically involves cultivating crops or raising livestock. And this is done to produce food, fiber, or other agricultural products. And running an agriculture business is kind of like being a conductor in a symphony of nature, orchestrating the growth of crops and nurturing livestock. And it's not a surprise that this business almost never fails because it 
provides fundamental needs for humanity, right? We're always gonna need food, clothes, and other agricultural related products. And the United States Department of Agriculture or USDA estimates that farmers make about $92,000 a year. And success in agriculture requires a combination of skills, understanding market trends, adaptability, and a lot of hard work. So the pros of this one are it is an essential industry, you have the potential for government support and grants, and you have a very high chance of success. The cons of this one are basically everything else. There's seasonal variations, weather related risk, market volatility. There's a high initial investment in both land as well as farming equipment. It's extremely labor intensive, and there's a lot of regulatory requirements. So although you do have a high chance of success, it's a very difficult business that's hard to scale, and it has a super high startup cost. So for those reasons, I'm gonna give this one a 6.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Now the next one on the list is a business that dispenses both profits and snacks. And that's a vending machine route business that has a 90% success rate. And this is a business where you potentially will never have to worry about dealing with grumpy employees or someone stealing your stapler. And that's because it's almost completely automated. The machine does almost everything for you. All you need to do is go in and replace the products that were in the vending machine and then collect the cash. And it's not surprising that this business has such a low failure rate because of the potential for passive income, low overhead costs, and the fact that people always crave snacks and convenience. That this machine is the best restaurant in Brooklyn and it always had a table for me. And a fun fact about this is vending machines have actually been around for nearly 2,000 years since the first century AD. And the first ever vending machine was a coin-operated holy water dispenser. And it was used in an Egyptian temple to dispense water for ritual washing. And there are tons of people making money with vending machines, both as a side hustle and as a full-time income. Marcus Graham, for instance, makes $300,000 a year and only works four hours per week with his vending machine business. And the average vending machine will make you about $300 per month. And so after costs, you're probably gonna need at least 20 vending machines to make a full-time income. And the most important skill you're gonna need to know with this is strategic location selection. Because when it comes to this business, location is everything. And a used vending machine is probably gonna cost you between one and $5,000. So the pros of this one are passive income potential, flexible working hours, low labor costs, and scalability. The cons of this one are machine maintenance and repair, competition, product spoilage, vandalism, and the need to continuously restock. But overall, because of the fact that it's so easy to start, I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. The next one on the list is for you if you wanna make a fortune while being the guardian of other people's hidden treasures. And that's going to be a self-storage facility at a 92% success rate. And this is basically where you provide rental space for individuals or businesses for storing their goods. And this can range from a small no-frills unit to a larger climate-controlled facility with security systems. And this is another one of those businesses that Kate to a basic human need. People are always gonna need places to store their belongings. And this is a business that is not only recession resistant, but it's also inflation resistant as well. And a five by five foot storage space will make you about $55 a month. And the best thing is because apps like Clutter, which is basically the Uber of storage spaces, make it easier than ever to get started in this business. So if you basically have a little bit of extra space in your garage or your apartment, you can get started with an app like Clutter. So the pros of this one are continuous demand, and the potential for passive income. It's extremely scalable for a physical business and there's relatively low labor requirements. Some of the cons of this one are the initial investment in property and infrastructure, competition from existing facilities, and there's gonna be security and liability considerations. But overall, this is one of my favorite ones. I think it's a great opportunity. I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is gonna be a dirty business where you can make some clean cash and that's going to be a laundromat business at a 95% success rate. That's right, this is basically a self-service laundry facility where you provide washers, dryers, and sometimes other services. So you could also offer folding, dry cleaning, or even put vending machines inside of your laundromat business. And there are thousands of people making really good money from this. For instance, Dave Mintz became a millionaire within 10 years after buying his first laundromat. And the average laundromat turnover is $142,000 a year. Now, laundromats do have a high startup cost. Obviously, you have to buy the facilities as well as the 
washers and the dryers. But new apps like Sudshare, which is basically the Uber of laundry mats, allow you to make money from your own home. So you basically do people's laundry, you wash and dry their laundry, and then you would deliver it to them. So this is basically a way to turn your house into a laundry mat. And there are people making really good money from this. But if you did start a laundry business, it is relatively automated. You would just have to go in, collect the cash, make sure the washers and dryers are working, and make sure that products such as detergent are always in stock. So the pros of this one are it has a very good ROI or return on investment potential. It's also very simple and there are low management costs. The cons of this one are it's a very capital intensive business. It does take a lot of money to start up a laundromat. Another con is you have to be very careful about the location that you choose and there can be high repair costs. But overall, I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. Now the next one on the list has such a high success rate that it didn't even measure. It was basically off the charts. And this is a type of transportation business, but it's the one that has the highest success rate out of all the different types. And that is a dump truck business. And this is where you transport large quantities of materials such as gravel, debris, or soil. And this is very useful for construction, landscaping, or infrastructure related projects. So basically, if you have a dump truck, you are gonna be making money because a lot of different people need your services. And there's tons of people making money from this, such as Dwayne Wiltshire, who started a $2 million dump truck business. And it's estimated that the average dump truck makes about $178,000 a year in revenue. And that boils down to about $80 per hour. And the most successful types of dump trucks are those that work in the mining industry. So some of the pros of this one are the potential for very high earnings. It is also an essential service and there's potential for expansion and fleet growth. Some of the cons are the huge initial investment in trucks and equipment. There's also maintenance and repair costs and there's potential for downtime in between projects. But overall, I think this one is really good and I'm gonna give it an opportunity opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10 because we all know that every good day begins with a good dump. By the way, I made a side hustle tier list where I ranked the best and the worst side hustles from S tier, which is the best to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.